Hey guys, how's it going? The So and So show's coming up right after this, but right now I'm playing with my space shuttle. I remember as a kid, I watched the space shuttle blast off so many times. I lived so close to Cape Canaveral that as it blasted off, I could watch it travel through the skies into the orbit. It was amazing. I was told once that on the space shuttle, there are over 600,000 moving parts. That's a lot of things that could go wrong. I bet you the astronauts sitting in the front up here were really hoping that all 600,000 parts did their job. Because if they did, the mission was a success. As I think about that, I think of one word. A word that you and I don't really like to think about or even hear often. And that word is obedient. The word obedient simply means this. Doing your part. Just like all the parts on the space shuttle, if they did their part, the mission was a success. Now for you and me, when we do our part, we are obedient to God, then we can enjoy a success in our life. We can enjoy um, joy and peace and seeing God move in our life. In our God time today, we're looking at Psalm 143. And Psalm 143 was written by King David. King David wrote most of the Psalms. Some of the Psalms he wrote before he was king and some after he was king. So basically, when you read the Psalms, you're hearing from a guy who knew how to follow God when things were good and when things were not so good. In Psalm 143, King David is praying to God, asking God to do something special. In verse 10, King David says this, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. And basically what David was praying was saying, God, teach me how to obey. Teach me my part, because I want my life to be a success. There are many dangers around me, and I want to be about your perfect will. He also asked God to lead him, and that when he's led by his spirit, then David would find himself on level ground. It's nice to walk on level ground. You're not worried about tripping or falling. And when we are following God and we can uh, know that we are obedient, then we can trust that the ground beneath us is level, that we're not gonna trip or fall. It doesn't mean that we'll be problem free because God uses problems to, to teach us things. But the most important thing today is to understand that we have a role to play. We have some obedience to do. And when we're obedient, we're simply doing our part. So today, Jump in God's word, read Psalm 143, read how David um, asked God to teach him more about being obedient, teach him about how his will works. Because when we know God's will, then life becomes a little bit simpler, a little bit more enjoyable when we know God's plan. Thanks so much for guys for watching. Enjoy God's word and enjoy the so-and-so show coming up next. Hey, John, have you seen my... Wait, I'm John! John, wait. <laughs> Why are your pants on your head? Why aren't your pants on your head? Mm. My name is John. And I'm Brandon. And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. That's right. Today we're, wait, what? <laughs> what, what? Mm. Why are the credits, what's going on? These, these credits usually come at the end of the show. Feel like we really learned a lot today, buddy. We have? No, we just started. Why are you? Hey, what's your answer to the question of the day, Brandon? No, no, we haven't even revealed the question. That the question later. of the day is, what have you discovered about God that surprised Don't you? Don't give it away. No, no, what about Kellen, the Bible story and all that stuff? Oh. <laughs> oh.
Reveal the question! What is happening, John? Everything is moving backwards. The show usually happens in the other direction. I don't know that, Brandon. But I do know this. There's nothing better than a hot and fresh apple pie. <sighs> ah. Okay, I don't know how or why, but for some reason the show is upside down right now. Everything is moving backwards. See, normally we'd start the show, maybe have a guest we talk to for a while, and then someone would say, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Uh, can one of you please explain what's happening? Is everything moving backwards for you too? Yes. Just look at the so and so show players. You see what I mean? Oh man, it's worse than I thought. Yeah, do, do you have any advice? No. But I do have an idea. Do you think that'll work? I don't know. Let's see. It worked! Great! What's our story today, Kellen? Our story today was written down by a guy named Luke in a book we now call Luke. He wrote about two followers of Jesus who were walking on the road to a village called Emmaus. I woke up this morning and for a moment I was happy. I'd forgotten about all the things that had happened. But then I remembered. I can't believe he's gone! I, I, I don't even know what to do now. My whole world is turned upside down. <laughs> As they were walking, a man they didn't recognize came up and walked alongside them. What's up? Hello! What are you talking about as you walk along? You know, just all the stuff that's been going on in Jerusalem with Jesus. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know about the things that have happened these last few days? What things? About Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet! He was powerful in everything he said and did. We really thought he would be the one to set our people free. Yeah, but then our rulers had him arrested and sentenced to die. <laughs> they nailed him to a cross! And now it's the third day since he died. But then... <clears throat> then... what? We were told that our friends went to Jesus' tomb and it was empty. Somebody must have stolen the body. <gasps> Mary and the others said that, that there were angels. I, I know, but... And the angels said that Jesus was still alive. We really want to believe it's true, but how could it be? They walked on, still very confused and sad. They had no idea that the man walking with them was actually Jesus himself. How foolish both of you are. Excuse me? How long it takes you to believe what the prophets said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? I mean, I guess. We're a little rusty on what the prophet said. Then, Jesus explained everything that was said about himself in scripture, rewinding all the way back to Moses and the prophets. It was like God had planned for this all along. Wow, it makes so much sense now. You sure know a lot about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Do you have to keep walking? I have so much more to ask. It's getting dark. You could stay the night with us. Join us for dinner, at least. Okay. Oh, All right. Super. <laughs> I make great bread. So the man they thought was a stranger, but really was Jesus, joined them for dinner. And when Jesus gave thanks and broke bread, they finally recognized him. It's Jesus! But then Jesus disappeared from their sight. Did you? Was he? I did, and he was! Oh, I knew there was something special about him! The way he taught us about the prophets and Moses! We were so excited on the yeah, road, we weren't we? To, we have to go back to Jerusalem and tell everyone! 
mind, they'll never believe us. We have to try. When they got to Jerusalem, they told the 11 disciples what had been hard for them to believe, but what they knew to be true, what God had known would happen all along, that Jesus had come back from the dead. He was alive. The end. Hey, great job, so-and-so show players. Uh, oh no, no, they're going backwards again. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Cool story, Kellen. Isn't it though? Those two on the road thought they understood what was going on. Then God goes and does something completely impossible by bringing Jesus back from the dead. I always think it's surprising how God's plan works out. I know, but God plans for things like thousands of years in advance. How could we ever understand? We probably can't, but it helps to kind of rewind and see how God has made things work out in the past. That way, even if bad things happen or things we don't understand, we can trust that someone who is bigger and smarter than we are has got things under control. I wonder if God's got one of these. Probably not. Yeah. His is probably way bigger. Sure. Whoa, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Whoa, whoa, oh, boy. Now, I'll leave you to Wait, it. You Bye. Wow, that's someone who knows stuff was amazing. Makes me want to bake a pie. I don't even know how to deal with you right now. Thanks for having me. Bye. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, hey, that's all the time we have today, Felina. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, I think the best thing to remember is that even if your pie recipe doesn't turn out the way you expect, you can still have fun baking it. Mmm, huh. that's yummy. Any advice for someone out there who might want to learn how to bake a pie? Uh, I still don't know why this is happening. Oh, you know, apple, mm. cherry, pecan, strawberry rhubarb, mm. all the classics. But hey, I don't have to know everything, right? Huh, I'll have to try that. Hey, what are your favorite pies? Sometimes it's better to be surprised. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Oh, there's no right or wrong way to eat a pie, but I like to just pick up a nice warm pie and just smash it in my face. Uh, I know we already did this, but... You know, I've always wondered, what's the best way to eat a pie? Reveal the question! <laughs> what have you discovered about God that surprised you? My name is Felina Tossi, and I make pies. Oh, well, welcome to the show! Who are you and what do you know? It could be something that you've read about God in the Bible, or it could be something that God has done in your own life. Welcome. Good to see you. Talk about it together, and we'll see you again, hopefully right side up this time, on The So-and-So Show. And I'm John. We know who you are, John. Welcome to The So-and-So Show. And action. Mm. Right, guys, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Ow. Loud. Rolling. So what are you doing after the show? I'm going to replace the batteries in this remote. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, mm. that was good. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, what do I have to do to get some coffee around here? Hey, John, are you ready to start the show? Now I'm confused. 